Welcome to Learning with Tembi. It's your economics teacher here, Tembi Nezengane. As I strive to meet the needs of a modern learner through this learning experience, allow me to give you the first lesson of our program. We all know that economics grade 12 comprises of two papers in each uh, main examination. This includes the media exam, the preparatory exam, as well as the final examination. So each paper carries 150 marks, and the topics covered in paper one are macroeconomics and economics pursuits. And the topics which are covered in um, economics paper two are microeconomics and economic issues, also known as contemporary economics. So macroeconomics is a branch of economics dealing with the performance, the structure, the behavior as well as the decision making of an economy as a whole. So the topics listed here, they form part of your paper one uh, mid-year examination. But today we're going to put our focus on the circular flow model and um, most particularly on the open economy circular flow. Before we even attempt to discuss the circular flow model, I always prefer reverting back to grade 10 economics where you were introduced to economics and its philosophy of study. And in that way, you're going to gain a better understanding of how the economy works. It says here, economics is the study of how individuals, how businesses, how the government and other organizations choose to use the scarce resources to satisfy their unlimited needs in a manner that is efficient and equitable. So when you were introduced to this subject, you were informed that we have an economic problem. And that economic problem is that we have scarce resources versus the unlimited needs and wants. So what exactly are we talking about when we say we've got uh, the scarce resources? We are referring to the factors of production. Factors of production uh, refers to the inputs which are needed in the production process to produce final goods and services. So at your level right now, we will only talk about the four factors of production. But as you proceed with your studies, you will have more factors of production prevailing, like time and knowledge. But so far, we're only going to focus on land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. So land is actually the natural resources which are available for production. So it's not just the natural resources, but it's the natural resources as well as its physical environment. Then secondly, we've got labor, and labor is also known as human resources. This is the human input into the production process. Thirdly, we've got uh, capital, and these are goods which are used to produce other goods. And lastly, we've got enterprise. Like I've said, it's commonly known as entrepreneurship. And this is where entrepreneurs organize the other factors of production and they take a business risk in order to make profit. Now, going down to the circular flow model, um, let me say to you, uh, a model is a simplified version of re reality. So the purpose of a model is to take a complex real world situation and pave it down to the essentials. The same applies to the circular flow model. So a circular flow model is a simplified representation which is showing the flow of income and expenditure as well as the relationship between the participants of the economy. Now, who are these participants of the economy? The participants of the economy includes households, which are the consumers. It's got businesses. Uh, we've got the government. And lastly, we've got the foreign sector in an open economy, and I will explain what that means later. So if you can check from the definition of economics, wherein we were saying economics is the study of how individuals, how businesses, how the government and other organizations use the scarce resources in order to satisfy 
the unlimited needs and the wants. You can see that we were actually talking about the participants of the economy. So we study economics because we want to know, we want to find solutions for the participants of the economy to use the scarce resources in a way that they will reach maximum satisfaction. When I um, mentioned the participants of the economy in our previous slide, I said we've got household, we've got businesses, the government, as well as the foreign sector in an open economy. And I did say I will explain what that means later. So an open economy is an economy that allows for foreign trade to exist. It's an economy that carries out trade and financial transaction with other countries. So in an open, a circular flow model of an open economy shows the working of or an economy that is open to foreign trade, an economy that allows for imports and exports. Therefore, opposite will be the case with a closed economy because a closed economy will only include three sectors which is household, businesses, and the government, and it will exclude the foreign sector because a closed economy does not allow its country to trade with other countries. Now let us unpack the roles played by each participant of the economy, starting with households. Households are the primary participants of the economy because they are the owners of the factors of production. So. What households do is that they will sell their factors of production to the firms and they receive remuneration from that. So they receive remuneration in a form of uh, wages, rent, interest, as well as profit. And if you can see, we've got four forms of remuneration and these four forms of remuneration, they are directly aligned to the factors of production. So when households invest their human resources, they will receive uh, wages as their remuneration. When they invest land or their natural resources, they will receive rent as a remuneration to that. And when they invest their capital goods in the production process, they will receive interest. And when they apply entrepreneurship and when they take a business risk, they will receive profit for that. They will then, with the remuneration that they receive, they will then receive, uh, they will then buy goods and services from firms to satisfy their needs. In this case, it makes households consumers in the economy. So one role that uh, co uh, households play is that they are consumers in the economy. And an expenditure made by households in the economy is known and addressed as consumption, and it is represented by a capital letter C in the accounting aggregate. Lastly, it is households that decide what to buy, when, where, and how to buy products in order to satisfy their needs. Our second participant of the economy is businesses, also known as firms. So what businesses do in the economy is that they purchase factors of production from households in the factor market, and they use these factors of production to produce goods and services. They are the primary producers in the economy, and we can also refer to them as suppliers. They then sell these goods and services to the government, uh, the households, the foreign sector in the product market. If you can check now, we have uh, talked about two kinds of market. That is the factor market as well as the product market. So the difference between the two is that a factor market is a market where factors of production are sold and product market is a market where goods and services are sold. So the expenditure which is made by firms in the economy is identified as investment and it is represented by a capital letter I in the accounting aggregate. It is businesses that determine what products to sell to satisfy the household's needs and wants. The third participant of the economy is the public sector, 
also known as the government or the state. This refers to the local, the regional, and also the national government. The government plays both the role of a consumer and the role of a producer in the economy. In this sense, the government will receive taxes from both businesses and households, and with the revenue that it receives from taxes, it will produce public goods. It will buy factors of production from the households in order to produce public goods. So when the government is buying factors of production from households, it's playing the role of a consumer. And when it is producing public goods to the households and the businesses, it's playing the role of a producer. So with public goods, public goods have uh, two characteristics. They are non-excludable and also they are non-rivalry. So what do we mean by that? When you say public goods are non-excludable, it means that it is costly and also it's impossible for one user to exclude others from using the good. Uh, an example of non-excludability can be in this sense. If I buy a private good like a cake, then I can exclude others from having a piece of my cake. However, if the national defense is provided, then it includes everyone, even if I strongly disagree with the South African Defence Force policies. The South African Defence Force still protects us. So you cannot choose to be unprotected and the National Defence Force cannot protect everyone else and exclude you. That is um, the non-excludability characteristic of public goods. And then when we talk about a uh, non-rivalry of goods, we mean that uh, it is um, when one person uses a good, it does not prevent others from using it. An example of non-rivalry means that uh, when one person uses the public good, another person can also use it. With a private good like a cake, if I consume it, then the next person cannot just have it too. But with a public good like the national defense, um, my consumption does not reduce the amount left for the next person to use. So those are the characteristics of public goods. It's also, it also buys some goods and services from businesses and supplies them free of charge when needed. So all expenditure made by the public sector they are referred to as government spending and they are represented by a capital letter G in the accounting aggregates. The fourth participant of the economy is the foreign sector. And we only talk about a foreign sector in an open economy. So if it's a closed economy, we do not talk about a foreign sector because a foreign sector is only included in economies that allows for countries to trade with one another. So there is a flow of goods from the foreign sector and they are paid by individual households, businesses, and also the public sector. And this flow of goods from the foreign sector is known as imports. These imports can be seen as an expenditure by households, businesses, and the public sector. And we regard it as a monetary outflow. And the reason for this is this um, is that when you buy goods from other countries to your country, there will be an outflow of money from you or from your economy to the rest of the world. So when you buy imports, we consider it as a monetary outflow in the economy. We also have a flow of goods and services to the foreign sector from businesses and households. And this flow of goods and services to the foreign sector is known as exports. Exports will result in an income for individual households, for businesses, and also the public sector. And we consider it to be a monetary inflow because when we sell goods to the rest of the world, there will be an inflow of money into our economy. So the foreign expenditure is expressed by an X minus M in the accounting aggregate. X representing exports and M representing imports. So X is positive 
because it is an inflow of money and m is negative because it's an outflow of money from our economy lastly we've got the financial sector and the financial sector is not regarded as a major participant of the economy this sector comprises of the uh, banks or the financial institutions savers will deposit their surplus funds into the financial institutions and the financial institutions will then use the money to lend those who are running into a deficit so anyone or any participant within the economy can be running into a deficit this includes households firms and the government and they will have to look for more funds or to borrow money from the financial institutions in this case these deficit units will be regarded as borrowers in the economy. Okay, well, I think we have exhausted enough discussions on the participants of the economy. Now let us look at the circular flow diagram. And starting from households, households, they are the owners of the factors of production, like we have said. So what's going to happen with household is that they are going to sell their factors of production via the factor market to the government and also the firms. And they will receive income of those factors of production when the government pays for them and when the firms pays for them via the factor market. So what happens when household has received income after selling the factors of production. First thing is that household will pay tax to the government because they receive public goods and services. And also the same applies to firms. Firms will also pay tax to the government and they also receive public goods and services. One more thing that households do with their income is that when they have a surplus of uh, funds, they will save it in the financial sector. And if ever they are running into a deficit or they are running uh, short of funds, they will borrow money from the financial sector for themselves. And uh, another thing is that households with the income that they receive, they will spend it on goods and services via the product market the same applies to the government like we have said that the government sometimes it buys goods and services from firms so that they can provide them for free or they can provide them as public goods via the product market the government will buy goods and services from firms and the firms will supply these goods and services to the government and also to the households uh, after purchase Another thing is that uh, via the product market, our firms or the government or household may sell goods to the rest of the world or to the foreign sector. And those goods are known as exports. Uh, so the foreign sector will have to pay for those exports. Another thing is that we, as the economy, we may have the need to buy goods from other countries. And those goods are known as imports. And we also pay for them. So if you can check in this circular flow model, we've got solid lines as well as dotted lines. The solid lines are representing the real flow and the dotted lines are representing money flow. So the difference between the two is that a real flow is the flow of goods and services as well as the factors of production, whereas money flow is the flow of um, payments or is the flow of money in the economy. So basically this is what we mean by the circular flow. This is how the circular flow is represented. And this is the circular flow of an open economy. Just to give a summary of what we have discussed in the previous slides on the interaction between the participants of an economy, we can start by saying that households provide factors of production to producers and also they receive income in return and they receive that income in a form of rent, in a form of wages, interest and profit. 
One thing that you have to take note of is that income is represented by a capital letter Y in the accounting aggregate. Secondly, households will purchase goods and services from firms and firms will receive income from sales revenue. Households and firms purchase goods and services from the foreign sector as imports and the foreign businesses will receive money from our firms and households. Another thing is that our firms will sell goods and services to the foreign sector and these goods and services are known as exports. Households and firms pay taxes to the government and taxes in the accounting, ac accounting aggregates are represented by a capital letter T. The government provides public goods and services to households and firms. So the unspent part of households or firms income is saved in the financial sector of the economy and all the savings are represented by a capital letter S in the accounting aggregate. The money invested by firms and households is known as savings. The funds received by the financial sector are used by firms to purchase infrastructure for the production of goods and services. This flow of money from the financial sector for use by firms is known as investment. We've already uh, mentioned that when we were discussing businesses. With the circular flow model of an open economy being discussed, our next lesson is going to cover the accounting aggregates as well as the multiplier. And thank you for joining this learning experience. I hope you guys had a great time and you did benefit a lot. So if you wish to arrange for a one-on-one -on -one lesson, you can email me on tembinezengane at gmail.com or you can just drop a call on 079-674-5767. I'm so willing to help you guys in whatever challenges you're going through with regard to economics.